Hello, my wonderful people. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on your time zone or anytime you are coming across my platform. If it is your first time and you like what you are watching, kindly subscribe, put on your notification bell to all notifications. In that way, you'll be able to know when we upload a new video. Here in Linda's TV show, we react to all forms of videos and we sit down there to watch it together with you and i want to appreciate youtube for creating this wonderful platform i put a disclaimer that here in linda's tv show we do not promote violence we do not promote hate speech we do not promote misleading information we are here to inform and educate the members of the public about the happenings and again breaking news senator ifani oba is dead Ifani Oba, senator representing Anambra South District in the National Assembly, is dead. The politician and businessman died in the United Kingdom, UK. Senator Oba was said to have departed Nigeria for the UK two days ago. And some people will be wondering how did he die, what led to his death. According to the source and information from the information center, they say Senator Oba died during an operation in London. A source close to the lawmaker has said, yes, he is dead. The source, who is a friend of the legislator, confirmed, we are waiting for the family to issue a statement. We spoke to him three times yesterday before he went into the theater for the oppression. Ha! This world is nothing. That is why I tell people, whatever you do, just bear in mind that this world is not our place. We are just like visitors now. If somebody tells me in my dream that today, Ifani Oba will not be alive. Even myself speaking, nobody knows tomorrow. That is why we need to be prepared. That is why we need to be ready. Make sure that whatever you are doing in this world, your hands are clean. Make sure that whatever you are doing, when you leave this planet, that people are going to be remembering you for good. Now, the question is, what is Ifa Nyoba going to be remembered for in Igbo land? What is Iwanya going to be remembered for in Biafra land? Are they an exemplary people? This is the question you ask yourself. This is not a good news. This is a sad news regardless of what or whom the person is. This is an example for those that are still living, that are still committing atrocities, that are still buying beer friends, that are still serving for lanes. Anana. Ifa nyo ba, aburuna onye meregene, onye ngura wu. Ohande zendi ba, aburuna onye meregene, ngura wu. Ndi bo, emera nyi fe eme. Ndi fula nega abya, korono, juno, me, di bo, ndo no kama. Ndi kwa siri dena asa, asa nyo kungwa ne wene, he was feeling sick. He traveled to London, almighty London. Those things in London can be bring to Biafra land. Biafra land can be better. We have everything. God blessed our land naturally. But a Brucey fire in a bufusi. Ogarebo gazotando. Aquifunania. When is when it's time for you to leave this planet? Also, your baro gebo bana. It will that is inevitable. London is the best place to go for surgery. What happened? Well, I'm going to play some videos for you people to watch. If you expect me to come here and to be laughing, making mockery, be happy because he's dead. Why should I do that? This world is not our own. Nobody knows tomorrow. So don't laugh. Don't celebrate. Don't jubilate when somebody leaves this planet. You should only learn a lesson from this. I'm going to play some video. Most of you might not believe it. Even myself, when I heard the news, I couldn't believe it. I need to go and search. The news is everywhere. If annual bar is no more, you that is listening, you that still have opportunity to mend your way, would you mend your way? All those people that contributed in the kidnapping of Mazin Nandekano, Unaya Hengudo, 
Apele ni na anu onu iso nandi bwari izu. Ba ankata anu anu riego. Je gide mazi nandi kanu against his will of traveling to Nigeria. Uneje weli ya ochie ya ne preventi for his release. Hehehe. <laughs> and we find you about today. That oge bu mazi nandi kanu zo ana. Oge kwe. Mazi nandi kanu is sick. But God is still protecting him. Because he's an innocent man. Ono ni le jere ba izu. Jide nandi kanu. Bakwani izu papataya. If not. Mazi nandi kanu neba. Na anu. Oga na neba anu niuzu. Otu nu sinara pato wa. My people, you guys should watch this his interview before he died. Bye. Colleagues, and they said it's not only by bow zoning, but it's name names now. Okay, I mean, um, we've um, received that information. Uh, we made a statement yesterday. Uh, we came out from a meeting of uh, caucus, and uh, we made a statement. And um, we have also continued consulting. We are, the we are in the opposition party. And I think um, by consultation, we may be able to find um, a, a position that will be a win-win situation for each and every one of us. But for me, and for our people, people from the Southeast, we are still very strong, you know, contesting for the office of the Senate President of Nigeria, for the 10th Senate. That is our position till now. So maybe um, in the course of consultation, we will continue to update Nigerians of our position. But for today, for now, I'm still in this studio. The position of the um, South East Caucus is that we are going to contest for the Senate, the Senate President of... Um, against the position of the ruling APC? If that is our position for now. Who are, those, who, who are those running in the South East? We have um, Oju Zokalu, mm -hmm. we have Mr. Izunaso, mm -hmm. and then we have um, another gentleman, Senator Patrick. You know, and then... Um, we are all um, trying to see how we can, uh, you know, um, come to um, present one candidate. And for now, we are still consulting. That is the position of um, the South East Caucus. If you have uh, heard some of the arguments and debates from members of the APC who said, look, you have to give it to those zones and part of the country that gave the APC um, the votes in the presidential election, perhaps the reason or the reason behind the zoning of the APC. What do you have to say to that? Well, every vote matters without every uh, part of Nigeria contributing to the voting content. We wouldn't have had the number of results we have. So we shouldn't. There's a lot of things in terms of um, trying to zone. You know, after the presidential election, I think equity demands that we'll sit down and then look at every region because we are talking about Nigeria. Nigeria is not divided on who brings the vote and who doesn't bring the vote. And even those who have been accused or, or, or if the way you have presented it, those who didn't bring the vote, are we not part of Nigeria? But this is politics. No, it is politics. But politics demand also that you need to look at the problems and marginalizations and things people have been saying why do you think that a Southeasterner should be Senate President? Because the Southeasterner needs it. We need it in order to balance the equation. I thought it was a presidency that the Igbo people wanted. Yeah, we wanted the president. We didn't get the president, and we want to have the senior president. And what guy is it just because we are coming from a zone that has been badly marginalized, and that is what every Nigerian knows today. Part of what you saw that happened during the presidential election is part of. Um, this uh, agitation that people decided to show, you know. And I think uh, if we call ourselves one nation, one people, then we should at least put the balance very well, you know, equate it so that every region will have a sense of belonging. Because we're talking about the politics amongst uh, 109 senators, 360 hours of representatives. This is just a little number compared to the interest of a larger 200, 200 million people I mean, who I mean, will be coming to the interest of the Nigerian people because we're just talking about presiding officers' role. But the average Nigerian will be asking, what is the benefit in OR? But before I get into that, I mean, if you look at the history of the National Assembly in this fourth republic, look at the night from 1999. There is no single state in the Southeast that has not produced a Senate president. 
And if you look at it, they will say, uh, uh, just a moment, the politics of the National Assembly, again, after having the light of Kenny Namani, Pius Ayim, Tubal Kadibo, and the rest who have become Senate president, uh, all the time that President Obasanjo was president, you had an Ike Kudemadu, who for 12 years, during the time of uh, uh, the former Senate president, Saraki, and uh, the, um, the, his predecessor, he was the deputy Senate president. So, that those who argue that Igbo man has had his fair share in the leadership of the National Assembly. How do you react to that? Well, uh, people can say about things they don't understand. But if we go into the dynamics of their stay, the elongations, you know that, yes, we have not really had. What was, was it? Did we have a very free tenor during these uh, uh, times we are talking about? The answer is no. Do you understand me? And we are talking about the present situation in this country, how we are going to balance the equation in this country and bring tranquility to the country. We are looking at the president coming from the southwest and then the Senate deputy president coming from the northeast. And it demands that the Senate president should be given to the southeast or should be zoned to the southeast or fairly zoned to the south. The only problem we are having is consultation. And even if there was a very robust consultation among the people from the South by the ruling party, we can now come, maybe we'll come and then at the end of it say, okay, we, have, we want to give it back to the South-South. But there was no consultation. It's like, it, there's nothing the people can do. Is that how you guys see it? That's the way we find That's how you are being Yes, treated. there's nothing we can, there's nothing. You are even being marginalized in the National Assembly. That's how you see it. In, in the zoning by the by the ruling party, that is the way we are seeing it, you know. And not that we don't have human. I mean, like Oju Zokalo has a competency. Osta Izunaso has competency, and they have all served in this in the in the ruling party in the very strong positions in the past. As a former governor and then a, a former um, um, uh, organizing secretary of the ruling party, you know, they deserve to be given opportunity to be the senior president of Nigeria. So they have also contributed their own quota towards building of a, um, the ruling party. But now, so all of us in the in the opposition party, we are supporting the position of the southeast. The game is a game of the ruling party because they are in the majority, and the rule of the Senate says that you have to give it to them to be able to determine how it goes. But now that the APC had made its position known that they want because we are part from the south south. What is your next line of action? The next line of action is for us to go back to the drawing board and then present it to our people because this happened today. We we'll present it to our people and then we will take a position. What kind of uh, position will be acceptable to the senators? Nothing is cast on soon. Senators. Nothing is cast on soon. Um, every 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 dialogue is very important. Consultation is very important in politics. I mean um, I mean if we are going without anything, then. We need to ask ourselves, are we part of Nigeria? Mm -hmm. So let us have good consultation from the ruling party. If they think that we don't deserve to be the pre president of the Senate, then they even come and tell us what, we, what is for us. As for the four presiding officer roles, one has gone to the southeast. Is that enough to placate the, the southeastern eastern lawmakers? Well, I think about uh, some few minutes, a few hours ago, we have um, the... Almost, uh, almost uh, half of the contestants of the uh, House of Reps, you know, coming together, you know, trying to form an alliance on who will be. I don't think also. I don't think um, some of these things will, um, will, um, you know, will um, be fair to us, those of us that has contested the election. You know, you know how it is to get into, um, uh, to, to be voted in. So one of the things that is very important is. You don't just enforce these things to people that are so independent. And we have, um, we have our political parties, we have our stakeholders, we have people from our region that have sent us to National Assembly. You don't just come and enforce. There should be a consultation. We are all martial politicians in this country. There should be a proper consultation. You know, I think um, um, the ruling party did not get it right. In just, uh, you think it's going to backfire? I don't a know. similar Saraki Tambuai scenario could play I don't out. Know. Show, you won't get words from me, but uh, I don't know. If you are uh, not the, happy, the, the if you say Senate, you are not consulted, the politics of the Senate is a different ballgame, honestly speaking.
the politics of the Senate is a different ball game. It needs proper consultation. And that is what I think the only Are you warning the APC about this? Well well I have said it yesterday. I was in um, another television station. I said it. Um, there should be a proper consultation. Now that um, they have made their position known to Nigerians, thank God we took our position before they made their statement. So We'll go back to uh, we'll go back to the drawing board and then Mr. Mr. Fanyuba, let me allow you to listen to one of your colleagues who is coming into the National Assembly from the Southeast. This is uh, Senator Dave Umai, uh, who literally was conceding to the position of the party and that of Balatinobu. Take a listen to Senator Dave Umai. My brother came on consultation uh, with me, but yesterday. I saw the president-elect on his invitation and uh, he told me that he's already committed and uh, he said, please don't run. And I accepted and I stepped down for my brother, Senator Fabio. He's my consensus candidate. Yeah, it's okay. Good. Now, good. okay, decide you is one of the... Yeah, that's it. So that's it. Also I also you. stepped down for him as the deputy senior president. So I stay down to uh, uh, for two of them. I've always said, Inshallah, the will of God will be done in Nigeria. Thank you very much. Senator how do you react to that? Well, technically, when you're listening to uh, my brother, um, um, His Excellency Dev Omahi, he said that the candidate came to him. He said also that the president-elect invited him as two things. He came to him for consultation and the president invited him. Now the question is this. Have God will Ababio come to the Southeast Caucus? I am aware he went to he has seen the Southwest Caucus. Can you take it back to him and ask him if he had seen the Southeast Caucus? If he consults with you with okay. that, that is has you been asked to come to maybe on the invitation of the ruling party or on the invitation of the president-elect and then please help me to achieve this. This is what I have also for you people. I mean, we are all, we came to National Assembly from different platforms and we shouldn't be treated like nobody. That is it. We shouldn't be treated like nobody. And, then, and it's very, it's becoming a, a decimal for people to always, you know, abuse people of Southeast in this manner. That should stop. What do you do about it? Well, we can't say what we'll do, but we'll see the end of the game, how it will be. I mean, let's the, the, the most important thing, there's nothing, nobody's having anything against the president-elect. He's a nice gentleman. He's a good man. But in, in, in this, we, we don't know the politics that played that, you know, gave room for this, because he shouldn't even be part of this in the first place. Even though, yes, he needs to have a, a good senior that he will work with. But he shouldn't have come in so quick. And yes. for my brother, His Excellency Dave Umahi, that just threw in, I mean, he gave a statement a day. And then after a day, he was, he was uh, consulted and the people came to him. And the president called him, president they called him, and then he gave up. Okay, that's good in politics. Maybe they gave him the right words for him alone but not for the people of South East. Let me then ask you, I mean, some Nigerians, are, they, they are disenchanted by the manner uh, or the conduct of the National Assembly generally in what they think they get from the National Assembly in terms of representation, in terms of the benefits of governance to them. There are those who have even given a thumbs down for you people in the National Assembly thinking that you have not done well by Nigerians and in the interest of Nigerians is little of, or no concern to you people. The legislative agenda, the interest of Nigerians, do you people even consider it as ultimate and primary? So, uh, many people in the National Assembly have, you know, the way they work, the pattern they decide to choose to work for, the benefit and the interest of this country. So, if you ask me one simple question, and I'll ask you, go to National Assembly, go and ask today Nigeria economy. What singly I brought, what I singly brought into the table? I raised the motion that gave birth to the Deep Offshore Act that is giving Nigerian government today 800 billion naira annually. 
and something that had, was jettisoned over 20 years ago. And I brought the motion, the records are there. And then I championed the bill between me and the Basi Aban. And today, Nigeria is benefit over 800 billion annually. The optics out there is that the national excuse assembly me, members excuse me, sir, excuse me, sir, because, of Nigeria. Excuse me, because if you say are, are not contributing, and I'll tell you what I have contributed. You need to be able to tell Nigeria And I will tell that you that what I have done singly, of the national singly, assembly, my first year, nobody has done it in the last 20 years. But I'm not blowing horns. If it was, uh, um, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, whistleblower. Do you know what's supposed to come to my constituency? Let me give you an example. Of me to Abuja, and today I have given Nigeria Senator, 800 billion naira. Senator, let me give you two you examples. Say just a moment. Let me give you, this are the optics. Some Nigerians because don't believe that the interest is being covered. That's, senators that's, are not meant to be talking, that's, 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 to be talking to be, to be, to, 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 to be talking like people in the, in the streets, on but, the market. But you are supposed to. But I've just given you one, and then you can go back. It was not there. It was not there. I came to the Senate. I brought that. I brought the motion that gave birth to the bill. And today, Nigerian government is gaining over 800 billion naira annually from that bill. And nothing has been given to my constituency for sending me to Abuja to give that to Nigeria. And you are saying that senators are not adding value. Can I ask you? I am adding value. So everybody has a, a right to... The issue of to means themselves. and ways, some Nigerians are sad about the manner in which the National Assembly just allow the executive to have his way. Some Nigerians are also sad about the manner in which the CBM policies are being done. There are multiple exchange rates in this country. Working uh, in the Senate, 109 members of yours in the national in the Senate, what are you doing about that? Issue of insecurity in this country, if all of these issues are burning so much that you people feel as sad as Nigerians are, there should have been solutions, isn't it? You see, Nigerians, yes, Nigerians are not feeling the pulse of things. They are not feeling happy about what ha what's happening in the whole country. And then everybody is taking uh, his own or her own share of those that are elected, those that are in the executive, even the judiciary. But one thing I want you to know is that you cannot come and condemn the entire national assembly. I'm asking you a question. If you go to, if you go, if you go to my, if you go to, if you go to my about you and your colleagues, if you go to my constituents, the money will pay you as salaries from the taxpayers' money. If you guys are really doing the job that you they voted you to do there, if you go to that my, is a question. If you go to my constituency today, they will tell you they are proud of who what I'm doing, and that is why I have remained with Young Progressive Party, and then I came back with my wonderful viewers for watching this video together with me from the beginning to the end like i said before if you like what you see here if you like what i do in this platform as you have finished watching this video please hit that red button that says subscribe and put on your notification bell to all notifications in that way you'll be able to know when i upload a new video share my videos leave your comments in the comment section constructively until I meet your way again in my next video, I still remain your Linda's TV show. Bye-bye.